All right, friends, we've got lots of piles of different categories of books again. <laughs> I love categories. I'm so crazy. Um, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about my October TBR, my September wrap up, and my currently reading. So that's what we're gonna do today. Obviously, things are different. I colored my hair last night and this morning. It was quite a process, but I am Ariel, the Little Mermaid at heart. You know what, let me go turn my fan off. Okay, that's better. It'll be a little bit hotter in here, but that's okay. Um, so I took off my October TBR. I know I've shown you a huge fall TBR. Since then, I've added like a bunch of books. I have no control in the fall. I don't know why. I think it's because there's so many books that come out. We are all so excited about reading. Everybody is recommending books. I mean, it's just crazy. So I have way more books than I had in the fall TBR. So yeah, a lot of these are new and weren't on my fall TBR. Some of them were, a lot of them weren't. It's just who I am. But why don't we talk about the September wrap up first because I only had one, two, three, four, five, five books in September. Uh, it was pretty slow because I was so incredibly busy, which is totally fine. Like some months you're not gonna read as much. I didn't read a lot in August either. So I'm really not even worried about it. So I don't get upset with myself when I'm in a little bit of a slump. And I wasn't really in a slump. It was just more like I was just too busy to read and I was watching way too much reality, reality television. So um, let's, get into it because I have a lot to talk about and I'm hoping to get this done really quick. I'm not going to go into synopses, just going to tell you the vibes like I usually do. Two of the books I read in September are actually graphic novels and this one is Garlic and the Vampire and I need to get my own copy. I got this from the library and the sequel to it is Garlic and the Witch. These are so precious. If you need a sweet harvesty fall time book, I can't recommend these enough and the color schemes are so pretty if you hear my dog whining she just wants to come in those color schemes are so pretty so basically this is about little garlic and his little friend group of vegetables that were born in this garden this witch's garden and they help tend her vegetables and um, they have like a little like farmers market in this sweet little village it's very cute the first one garlic uh, has severe anxiety which is a great representation of this book they all choose her to go to this castle that supposedly has a vampire in it because obviously garlic and vampires don't mix, even though she is a very anxious little garlic. It's so, so good. And then this one is about her kind of origins, but also what her future looks like. My favorite part about this is the fact that she is best friends, <sighs> my dog. She's best friends with this little carrot and he's always so worried about her. It's really precious. I really, really love this. So I'm going to get my own copy of this, but I bought this one. I can't express how much I love this. Five stars. So wholesome. So good for the heart. Highly recommend these. So, so sweet. The next one I will just briefly mention, and it's Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. Obviously, I did um, my first little reading vlog was with this book. I really love this. I can't recommend this more for this time of year. It's set in a coastal isolated island and it takes place on Halloween night and it's just so good. It's a retelling of Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. It's done so well. The vibes in this are immaculate. I highly recommend this one. Yeah, she does overwrite it a little bit with some metaphors and cliche sayings and things, but I would have given it a full five stars um, if it not were not for the overuse of that stuff. But yeah, it was exactly what you want to read around this time if you like thrillers. Um, Alice Feeney is just not disappointing. I loved Rock, Paper, Scissors last year and this one was just as good. The next one I'm going to briefly touch on. I thought it was extremely boring and I hate talking bad about books. Um, so I will tell you what it is. The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. I have enjoyed plenty of Megan Miranda's books in the past. I liked Such a Quiet Place um, that she wrote last year. I gave it four stars. I've read other ones by her and I've liked them. This one was so incredibly boring. Skip it. Don't even worry about it. Like, oh, I hate talking bad about books, but not worth your time. I wouldn't read it. Yeah, 
just not good. And the next one is by my favorite author. I have three favorite authors of all time. Lisa Jewell, Sarah J. Mass, and Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this is Taylor Jenkins Reid, Carrie Soto is back. I really liked this, didn't love it. I gave it four stars. I could just definitely tell that this was just a book that TJR just felt like writing during the pandemic that um, probably was good for her to write. But I will say that this was a great look into what it must be like to be an athlete and to be so set on your goals and needing to feel like you need to be perfect and be the top of your game, be the best. I don't know. I just feel like there wasn't a huge story here. I don't know. It was good. I did like the relationship with her dad. Um, Carrie is not a likable character and I don't think she's meant to be because she is determinedly someone who wants to be perfect and kind of does whatever she needs to do to get to the top and so you're not really supposed to like her but by the end you are rooting for her but I would say this is probably my least favorite but I still gave it four stars because I love the audiobook of it yeah but you know not a five star it's not Evelyn Hugo but it's really good so um, I do recommend it. That's all the books I read in September. Um, yeah, not a lot. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I did read like one of my favorite books. Like actually all of these were anticipated reads by authors I've loved before. Um, this one just was not, not it. But the other two I did like, and I loved, loved Daisy Darker. We are gonna talk about what I am currently reading, um, and I have been reading for a while. <laughs> so I'm still reading Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I'm taking my time with this. I know in the last vlog, um, I talked about like starting it and almost being, you know, halfway through it. I haven't read much more because when I started to read it, it got to a part that felt very triggering for me, but that's just me. Um, yeah, she was like seeing her dad for the first time after he passed because they work at the funeral home and her sister had to prepare her dad for the funeral. And that was just really, really hard for me. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I am still really liking this. It's cozy, but like heart wrenching at the same time, but good. So, um, yeah. I, I still, I will read it. I will finish it. I just need to be in the right headspace for it. The other night I read like straight through, I read 120 pages of The Secret Society of Irregular Witches and I'm obsessed with this book. This book is absolutely fantastic. Like probably might be possibly my favorite book of the year and I'm not even halfway done with it. I just know it is. This is about a witch who goes and helps take care of these other witches because they are hidden from society um, because witches are not supposed to be known or, you know, people don't know about them. And the found family and the love, the writing, everything feels like a magical moment. Everything, every word is filled with magic. Every word is filled with warmth. It's like, <sighs> the loveliest book all of the warm and fuzzies in this book so obsessed probably gonna be favorite of the year might be the favorite of the year and the other one I am reading but haven't gotten far into is my best friend's exorcism by Grady Hendrix I actually just watched the adaptation on a live watch with me with my friend Gabby over on her patreon we watched it the other night and the movie wasn't great it was campy it was fun the end was really dumb but um, if you want to watch it's on Amazon Prime but everybody says I should still finish this book because everybody loves it. The friendship they say is 10 times better in the book than it is in the movie. So any of my friends who have watched the adaptation and read this, I wanna hear your thoughts because everybody that was on the live stream on Gabby's Patreon said, you still need to read the book. It's still way better than the movie. Yeah, I would give the movie like two, two and a half stars. The first half of it was great and then kind of went downhill from there. So. I do, I do want to read this. It was really fun. Like I only got to like the very beginning when they became friends and I loved that part. I loved it. And the audiobook is really good too. So I will be finishing this in October for sure. Those are the three I'm currently reading. <laughs> I have so many and I need to edit myself. I have so many. I need to edit myself. We'll see if I can edit myself as we go, but it's probably not going to happen. All right, let's talk about what I want to read besides those in October. <laughs> 
The first three are cozies and I'll just go over them really quickly. In case you missed it, we did announce um, Lauren, myself, and Caitlin. We've created a Cozy Hollow Cozy Mystery Book Club and we're gonna be doing it bi-monthly. So every other month in October is gonna be our first month and we are reading In the Company of Witches. And this is an even fall, which is B&B mystery. And I'm so excited. Like so many people have already joined. You don't have to sign up, but like joined our discord, bought the book. Everybody's like sharing on Instagram. It's so exciting. I'm so happy to see everybody reading this. It's going to be so fun. And a lot of our friends are reading cozies for the first time. And this is what they're starting with. And it makes my heart so happy. And people have been loving this. So I might need to start this like really, really soon. Oh no, my spine got cracked. Did I do that? Oh, well, that's fine. I don't. But yeah, this is about um, witches set at a little B&B &B, and there's a murder and they have to clear their aunt's name, I believe. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this. And then another one that I think all of us are getting right now is Death in Castle Dark. And this is a dinner and a mystery, uh, dinner and a murder mystery. And this girl, she starts working at this murder mystery dinner party thing that they put on for people. Like it's, you know, a, an event you can go to. And I think murders actually start happening in this castle. This feels so gothic and so perfect for this time of year. And I just saw the cover for the second one and I'm gonna get the second one. Ooh, and I saw the cover for the second one and this one and it's like crow's nest or something in a crow's nest or something like that. And it looks so good too. I'm so excited for um, both of these. So yay for Cozy Mysteries. Oh, and I have another one and this is Bait and Witch. And I am so excited. This is the first in the series as well. And this is about a girl who used to work for the Library of Congress. And she uncovers some, I don't know if it's conspiracy or something, but they are out to get her. She gets fired. They're out to get her. And she has to leave and goes to the small town in Oregon to hide. She becomes the new librarian for the small town um, in Oregon. And oh, it says she learns that she's descended from a long line of witches and her powers have sprung to life. And she um, has a little cat companion and all these things. Oh my gosh. Witchy librarian with cats and murder. I love it. I'm so excited. And I just saw the covers for these ones too, the sequels. And there's two more out, I believe. This is a recent, fairly recent um, series. And I just love the floppiness of this one. So, yay for cozies. Definitely 100% getting to those because they're so fast and easy to get through. And if you want to join the Cozy Hollow Book Club, you still can. Um, you don't sign up, but you can um, follow our Instagram at Cozy Hollow Book Club. I'll link it down in the description. You can also join our Discord where we're gonna be talking spoilery and non-spoilery um, about the book. And we're gonna have some live reading sprints where we're gonna be reading the book together and then a final live discussion. And that's all gonna happen on Lauren's channel and I will leave her channel down below too. Uh, everybody's love and excitement for the book club is just makes me so happy. I'm fooling myself if I think I'm gonna get to all these. But there are so many witchy books right now and just good books. Okay, so let's do these in pairs. I'm gonna do The Crypt Kiss Curse and Suburban Hell. This is like a mom demon possession similar to My Best Friend's Exorcism, but it's like more with moms. And this is The Kiss Curse, which is a sequel to The X-Hex. I really loved that one last year. It was a huge hit last year and um, it gives kind of like Halloween town vibes. Um, meets Gilmore Girls, little romances. It's so cute. There's a little cat companion. It's just fun. And I loved that last year, the ex-hex, the main character, the, the man, his his name was Reese. And if you know, you know. Um, so these are two that I want to get to, uh, Suburban Hell and The Kiss Curse. And those will fly by. They have like the same exact page numbers. Oh no, this one's bent. And then two more witchy books. <laughs> is Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman and Cackle by Rachel Harrison. I didn't know that Rachel Harrison had just released a new book. Oh gosh, I'm not gonna remember the name of it, but you can look it up. She just released a new book. Um, but everybody's talking about this one. This is another witchy book. And I'm not excited about the spiders in this book, but I am excited about the small town vibes. And then this is obviously, I think it's a prequel. Yeah, the number one, book number one in the Practical Magic series. Um, so you can read the Practical Magic first, but people say you can also read this first. And so 
two more witchy books. I am so eager to get to all of these. Like I couldn't tell you which one of these I don't want to read, you know? Um, and I also have one more and this one, it's not the lowest on the list, but like, I don't know if I'm able to get to it, but I do want to get to it. It's called Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare and another witchy book. I don't really know much about it, but I just know there's a little romance between these two. Don't know much about it, but the cover is so cute. So that's a lot of books. <laughs> Just for the, that's just that category. And then a uh, horror that, I don't know if this is considered horror, but it's like gothic, spooky vibes, uh, YA fantasy. And that is Lake's Edge by Lyndall Clipstone. And my friend Liv over at Liv's Library, she loved this. I think my friend Kendall liked this too at Bookphoria. I think she liked this one too. It's like gothic. This was kind of the inspiration for my hair color. Um, well, I knew I was going to dye my hair red, but then like seeing this, I was just like, yeah, we're doing red because I love red. I used to be red my whole life. So I was just getting back to my roots, but this cover is really, really cool. And, um, the sequel just came out, Forest Fall just came out. So, uh, I'm eager to get to this. I just heard it was really spooky. That's what Liv said. Another horror that I really want to get and my husband bought me for our anniversary. We just had our, um, 16 year anniversary and he bought me. A handful of these books for that and that is From Below by Darcy Coates. I've been wanting to read Darcy Coates forever. Everybody says that she is cozy horror and this one is one of her newest and it is a chunker. 460 pages for a horror but underwater scares the living daylights out of me when it's involved in horror. Yeah this is going to be terrifying but I am really excited to get to it. Um, this might be around Halloween. I think this one's going to be closest to Halloween. Um, oh, and I also might as well, while I'm sharing it to you, another underwater one that I told you in my fall TBR is the drowning kind. So these two together, like, I don't know what it is about water that freaks me out, like gorgeous. And I loved the winter people by Jennifer McMahon. Um, and I haven't read anything by Darcy Coates, but maybe I could read these in a reading vlog together. Let me know if that's something that you would want to see. Two more YAs that I want to read. This one is more um, horror gothic and this one's more witchy YA fantasy. This is These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. And then I've already told you about Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffith, Griffin. And I want to read both of these together. Oh, look, it, the covers look really pretty together. Yeah, I want to read all of these. Oh my gosh, I want to read so much. And I've heard that if you liked Knives Out, you'll like this. And um, also I really want to read more witch books. And Young Adult flies by really fast for me. I just, I'm really excited. Oh, and I think a bunch of my friends are reading this. So buddy read friends, let's do it. So many of these books have been recommend, recommended by friends. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's talk about thrillers. I have four. That's low for me because I do have some more up there that I'd like to get to. Like this top shelf is fall TBR, like, but I'm like not prioritizing it those this month. Those might be in November. These are the four thrillers I'd like to get to in October. So we'll see. Everybody has been talking about this book and I loved the book that it's compared to. If you like The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, which is one of my top favorite thrillers of all time, you'll like Hidden Pictures. Um, by Jason Reculak, and I've heard this is creepy. There are creepy pictures in it. The main character is like a nanny to this little boy. He starts drawing creepy pictures, and yeah, so there's pictures in it. I don't know. Everybody says it's amazing. There's great reviews for this. They're saying it's like one of their favorite thrillers of all time now. I know I loved The Turn of the Key, so I'm hoping for really good things from this one because everybody's loving it. The next one, I knew I wanted to get this. I've never read anything from this author before, but this sound is so perfect for October and it's Spells for Forgetting. And this is just like a magical thriller. This is going to be so good. Adrian Young has written a ton of YA fantasy that everybody loves. I think the Fable series, um, people really, really love. And this one just sounds so atmospheric. I'm so excited. This is another one my husband bought me for our anniversary. This is one I want to like listen to the audiobook while I'm working. It just sounds really atmospheric and yeah, so excited. Next one is Runtime and it's a thriller set on a movie set, um, on a horror movie set. And I believe the things in the horror movie start happening in real life. This woman is the only woman on set. Um, yeah, never would do that in my life. 
but I've heard it's really, really good. And again, so many people that I love, Alice Feeney, Riley Sager, Samantha Downing, they all blurbed it and said it was really good. So I'm really excited for this and the cover is so beautiful. The last thriller, it's not a thriller, I don't know why I categorized it as their Cozy Mysteries, is the Agatha Christie Marple series. It's 12 new mysteries by all of these different authors. I'm not sure if they are um, telling their own tales about Miss Marple or if they're taking an old one and twisting it. I'm not sure what's happening, but so many um, authors that I like, Lee Bardugo, Lucy Foley, Alyssa Cole, Karen and McManus, Ruth Ware, so many great authors. So this one I will sprinkle throughout October. There's 12 mysteries. So yeah, I can sprinkle through it out. I love the deckled edges. Yeah, this just looks great. That's enough books, right? But I do have two romances just in case. I need to break up all the scary books. I have two short romances. They're both really short and that's When in Rome by Sarah Adams and Accidentally Amy by Lynn Painter, two of my favorite indie published authors. I believe that this one was traditionally published though. I've loved everything I've read by Sarah Adams and this one, it's like a modern take on the Roman holiday, but it also has Gilmore Girl vibes. I'm so excited to read this one. And then Accidentally Amy, you have to read this in the fall because I think their meat cute is over a pumpkin spice latte or something and it's so short. And Lynn Painter writes the cutest romances. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to hold all these books up. This is probably gonna be really dumb. Oh my gosh, look at all of these books. I'm crazy. I only read five books in September. We be crazy. That's all I have for you. September wrap up, what I'm currently reading, and my October TBR. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope that we all have the most spectacular reading month. Like everybody I know is so excited to read as much as possible this month. That energy is so infectious. Like all I do is watch people on booktube, bookstagram, have these huge TBRs and we're all like assuming we're gonna read 25 books, but I'm a mood reader. So this will just be good to have so many options. So anyways, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22 books, including the ones that I'm reading now. So 22 books is not that bad. And then I have all those up there that like, if my mood changes, I could definitely pick one of those, but you guys have seen all of those from my fall TBR. I think that's gonna be it for today. I hope you have a great day and let's have the best reading month in October. Bye.